How do you make a junkyard car run and drive? With nitrous. Ah! <laughs> On the first episode of Roadkill, we let a dart determine our destiny. And now that we're at episode 11 and we're fresh out of ideas, we're gonna do that again. <laughs> <laughs> it's a guaranteed formula, can't lose. Yeah. See, we're going to Houston for a drag race, but we figured if we're going to a drag race, we should drag race. And so we're gonna buy a car somewhere in Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, New Mexico kind of area, drive it to Houston and race it. Okay, right, so, so Houston, right? Okay, who's throwing the dart? You are. Still missing eyebrow from the last time we did this. No. How much do you like your eyebrows? <laughs> ah. Oh, brutal. <laughs> Ready? Yep. You suck really bad at throwing. <laughs> oh my God, you're in the Gulf of Mexico, dude. Oh, perfect. We're not buying a boat, so let's try this again. Height was pretty good. You landed on Hawaii, okay. <laughs> let's try this again. Let's do it. Dude, that was dead centered in Texas. Really? So we're there. Austin. Uh, you totally stuck me. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That really does hurt. There's some hair on there. Uh, I thought you were kidding last time. Ew. So you're thinking if we went to Austin, we could get something junkier and fix it more? Yeah. Okay, well, let's see what's available. Craigslist, here we come. The dart hit the map in Austin, but when I started looking around to figure out what we were gonna do in Texas, there was a guy on my Facebook page who recommended CTC Auto Ranch in Denton. And so we're gonna head about three or four hours north and check that out. We hit this junkyard. I think we need to get something that runs and drives. I don't think we can do any crazy engine swap or anything. Let's find a really great car without an engine and a really great engine in a car we don't want. We don't have time. We, dude, we proved we can do it in the snow if you give us three or four days. <laughs> There's no snow here. If we plan for one, we'll take three, yeah, we're good. There's no snow here, so cut that time in half. Let's find a car on top of other cars, stacked yep. up. Let's get the bottom one. Yeah, uh, let's make this as difficult as possible. There Ooh. it is, right there. Ooh. Junkyard next to a drag strip. Paradise. Absolute nirvana. Oh my God, it's almost that. all old sheet metal. This is gonna be good. All of a sudden, I see a drag strip, which gets me fired up, and then, Acres of cars. I mean, more vintage iron that I've ever seen in one spot in my entire life. And if I had a lot of money in a big ass trailer, I would have taken most of it home. 55 Fairlane, 63 Chevy. I like the ranch. 78 ish. Look Fairlane. at how complete they are. Look, all the chrome, all the glass, the steering wheel. Oh, Gremlin. On it. Dude, Gremmy. That was on the 59 website. 59 Chevy. That was on the website, dude. 65 Biscayne. Pinto. Oh, man. Pinto. Want the Pinto. When we got to the ranch, we met Alan Williamson, who is one of the owners of the place, and Finnegan had called ahead and talked to him so that we knew he was cool, we knew he was down with our program, which was that we had to buy a car, fix it in 24 hours so that we can hit the road, drive 300 miles, and compete at an NMCA race in Houston, where we're also gonna hang out with a bunch of our buddies from Hot Rod Drag Week. What have you got that's complete that maybe ran when parked? You know, as far as most of the stuff that's right in this immediate area here, if you want, we'll go out there and look around. Yeah. I'll show you what Let's I have. Then cool. you can go on your own and see what you can find. I've actually never been to a yard like this because I'm used to junkyards where everything is stripped. You know, you don't you don't find a shoebox Chevy with windows in it. You know, that stuff's long gone at the places I've been to. I mean, it had Trans Ams, Camaros, Plymouth Chryslers, Ford Chevys, everything from late 30s on up to the 80s. It was all there, you know, and, and mostly intact, which was awesome. Here's a trend that never really took off. Bondo flames, graphics that someday fall off your car. <laughs> awesome. You start to walk through the ranch and you see one big yard and then another and then another and then behind those trees there's even more. We could have spent at least a few days just rummaging through there finding project cars that we needed to have. The actual shopping was frustrating. We spent probably an hour walking this place and, and I'm, I'm looking at all these cars that are missing everything. One's got a motor but not a tranny. One's got a tranny but not a motor. One's missing all the suspension. And I always have this feeling that we should stop now and buy something and get working on it, but I'm gonna miss something even better 
just over a hill or you know behind a bush or something because there's cars everywhere. All right, well, we don't have time to roam 35 acres. I have a car that we use for just fiddling around, running, looking and stuff. Why don't y'all get in the car? Yeah, around. drive us Perfect. around drive everywhere. Cool. Point, point See out the what ones. I got. Yeah. We checked out the sea of really, really cool sheet metal out here, and the bummer is that all of those cars are either rotted into the ground or have no engine or there's some fatal flaw that means that we either can't afford it or he won't sell it to us or it won't run. So we've narrowed it down to this Olds, that Mopar, that Chevy, and that Pontiac, and we got to decide among them right now. The Olds we've pretty much blown off. It just, it needs a little bit too much. And I think basically we're not excited by it. This is a 67 Barracuda. No door handles, no dash, no wiring, no carburetor, no seats, no glass. So what no problem. The, what was the upside? No problem. <laughs> okay, so this one, it's already got headers, already got an aluminum intake on it. It looks like at one point it was a little speedy. I get what you're saying. This is the like, most performance oriented, but right. what do we do about a gas tank, glass? We're at a junkyard. There's gas tanks here. In 24 hours, we need to be driving away from here. And I, I doubt they'll let us work all night and we have no light. They haven't even asked yet. Yeah. You never know. I wave 10 or $12 in front of them. You never know, dude. We may own this place. All right, so if not the Barracuda, then sell me on the Pontiac. Well, I think you're I'm in love with. I'm not completely anti-Barracuda. I'm just thinking that the Pontiac or the Chevy are gonna be easier to get running. But this is more pimp than performance, to be honest with you. Oh yeah, I'm agreeing with that. There, there we go. go. Radiator. Ran when parked, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Let's look at the Chevy. <laughs> I wanted to go with this 66 Chevy because the guy knew that it had run and yeah, it was clapped out and gross. It had mouse turds in it and stuff, but I just sort of had faith that it could get there. And I knew that we were gonna be able to fix a small block Chevy anywhere with any rubber bands or duct tape that we had sitting around. And I thought we'd be able to turn the key and hit the road. I do like this because of my whole kink on the Dirty Mary Crazy Larry movie where they had the 66 Impala at the beginning. That car was blue. Yeah, and it wasn't a sedan either, but but I can dream. <laughs> I like the challenge of making the Barracuda run. You wanna make it decide between these on price? You wanna see what he'll take for that? Oh yeah, we may not even be able to afford these. <laughs> right. So negotiate, you're better than I am. All right, Alan, <laughs> I am not a greedy man. I know you're not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I've already spent a lot of money on plane tickets getting here. Yeah. yeah right. And that's your yeah, problem. That's my problem, yeah. I've already said you got nice boots on. Thank you, thank okay. you very much, yeah. Okay. I like your hair. You got a good, you got a good tan. Yeah. I feel close to you. Oh, buddy, old pal. I feel close to you. <laughs> what am I looking at for this ugly, oh, ugly steaming of pile yeah. of junk right. that is taking up a valuable space in your yard? Yeah, right. Think of what you could put here. I do about four thousand on it without the glass. Ooh. We're gonna have to just That's... lower your expectations <laughs> a little. <laughs> what you got in mind? We're gonna have to put a carb on it. Not cheap. So we need a carburetor. Uh, carburetor, some wiring, yep. uh, plumbing for the gas tank. We need a right. seat. It's worth two, right? Oh yeah, I'd, I'd do that for sure. Yeah, two, two's good. <laughs> two plus all the parts we need to put it back together. Right. If you can get us the windows like in so they don't fall out at 78 miles an hour, which will be, top, will be top speed for this thing. Yeah. yeah. Three grand, what do you think? I can't do it. No, not for three? About 3,800 is the best I can do on this one. Yeah. So what he's saying is this is worth virtually, well, this is worth twice as much as the actual Impala. Why don't we do I, this? Uh-oh. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, Why don't oh, we try oh. to get them started and see which one's... Startable? Startable. Okay. Okay. All right. If the engine you do that for us? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but we can't afford that regardless. Are you cheapskates? <laughs> we may have to walk away from this one. Yeah, I know. It's I may be so offended about the CUDA, we just leave all together. <laughs> Come on, baby. Yeah, Crank to life. It's Daddy it's needs yeah. a Mopar. Oh, dude. Oh, man. Yeah, that's good. I'm telling you, dude, we can make this run. I'm warming up to the notion. Here's what I say, dude. Huh. We'll give him his $3,800, but we want the glass in the car, and we need another seat. We'll make the rest of it happen on our own. So when buying a car from an auto ranch, you gotta expect the carburetor's probably gonna fight you a little bit. So I was smart enough to order a Holley 750 double pumper with mechanical secondaries. And you just don't go anywhere without your cheater setup. Hello, friend. Oh, I've missed you. 
I like that we have 24 hours to make a car we've never seen run, and we're putting nitrous on it before we even check the motor. Gotta have your priorities straight. Perfect. Smoke. I say we're good to go. That sounds all right. We got it to run pretty good. We decided we're gonna give it our best shot because we always have a fallback plan, which is the Chevy. So they just forklifted it over to the shop and they're gonna help us work on it. They also said we can stay here all night long and I'm thinking that's gonna have to happen. The really funny thing about this is we're four hours into this deal. And all we're accomplishing right now is making the engine run for more than eight seconds so that we can put the trans in gear to find out if the car even moves. And if it doesn't move, we've got to go back to the junkyard and pick out another car and try that again. <laughs> because nothing in this whole place, we're sure, will run under its own power. The first thing Finnegan did was strip the carburetor fitting. Can I blame you for that or is that not cool? You lie a lot on video. Can I blame China? <laughs> How about China? When you pay rad rides by Troy, and you give them a million dollars to build a hot rod and you wonder why? This is why. They're not working in a barn in 24 hours with Chinese made parts. Sure, they have fame and glory and money in their pockets and happy wives and children that like them. They're not having this fun. Not at all. Enter to win $5,000 by providing feedback and taking our survey. I think the odds of us winning should be pretty good after we spent this much money it's almost as tall as I am. 800 bucks to basically find out if the car will even move. What do you think? Is it gonna move? Of course. So the only issue here is you plumb that to a fuel line that's going to nothing. Yeah? Where would you like it to go? Some sort of gas can. Which we did not acquire, and we don't have the gas either. <laughs> we have no can or a gas. <laughs> we could wish it to, you know, life. Yeah, we could. Do we even have a jack? Man, I hope this thing moves forward and backwards. Is backwards actually a requirement? That might actually be a little greedy on our part. Okay, hopefully we're gonna fire it up now and make it drink out of this gas can. Sounds good. Happy. Come reverse. On, baby. Yes! Yes! That's reverse. No noise. And drive. Forward! I take back everything I said about this place. You I can get first, a quality automobile here. We're good. Wait, let's see, will the brakes stop it? No, no brakes. We're not going around the block without brakes. No, we need brakes. It's about midnight at the Auto Ranch and we've had big victories with the engine and the transmission and so we're gonna call it a night and go get some rest. It's first thing in the morning on Thursday and we thought we should attack the brakes first since we got the engine working, the transmission working, but no brakes. So, it's not first thing in the morning anymore. It's not? No, it's about lunchtime. Are you saying we're behind schedule? A little bit. What are you working on? Start at the top. Okay, stuff I can see right away. Put oil in, buy an oil filter. Um, do ignition switch needs to go in. Get another radiator that doesn't leak. Headlights, glass, brakes, gas mm. tank, seats, shifter, tires, tires if possible. Exhaust. I'll just cut it off. Yeah, cut exhaust. Yeah. We should stop the list now. Because it's only depressing? It's really getting overwhelming. Oh, outside door handles. Oh, that just put it over the edge, dude. We can't make this now. So that's our list, and it's Thursday at 11. We need to leave in eight hours. We'll be fine. There's no way in hell that's happening. Our problem is, is the seal for the filler into the tank is junk, but video producer Clint had a genius idea. We went and cut this piece of radiator hose and slipped it over the fill neck, and it's gonna make a perfect seal into the hole in the top of the tank. Probably the best part about being at CTC Auto Ranch here in Texas is that when we needed a part, we could just go out back here and find it. So I found our transmission kick down uh, mount there for the carburetor. We didn't have a seat for our car, so they grabbed this 69 Valiant out of the yard, rolled it in here, ripped out the bench and the seat belts for us. And I don't know if you can see this right now, 
but this is actually an ultra rare factory lightweight drag car with transparent aluminum quarter panels. Very valuable. What's our next big expense is my concern. We need rear tires. We'll take the two best of the four, stick them on the front. Yeah, the rears are better, so we'll throw those on the front, but then... Cut the exhaust off, that solves a lot of the issue back there. It does need rear shocks. Oh yeah, because they're completely topped out. Yeah, well, and the one is bent, so... Oh. Um, We're completely out of money. We're never out of money. We have Amex. <laughs> We'll just be in a lot more trouble when we get back to work. Right. And find out what we spent. I'm gonna cut the studs, let's go back to work, run out of daylight. I was really torqued up about the glass on the car. I was concerned the drag strip would not let us run without it. We had to have a windshield at least. And the glass guy shows up and he wants like 500 bucks to install glass that's sitting right out there in the yard. And that wasn't a good moment. We were standing around waiting for this guy to come down on the price, which he finally did. But then we find out that 67 CUDA glass is different than 68 or 69 CUDA glass in the sides. The doors are a little bit different. What a pain in the neck. And you know what? Coupe glass is different than fastback glass. So we're just screwed on the side windows. Here's where I'm stupid. After we figured out that the 68 glass wouldn't fit the 67 doors, we reinstalled the 68 glass and the 68 doors and installed the 68 doors on the car because I thought we had to have it. And it looks so stupid. We couldn't live with ourselves. Our junkyard car didn't look cool enough with blue doors and white paint. I just couldn't have it. So then Finnegan calls Jeff Lutz, who's standing in Houston at the drag strip where we want to race. Why we didn't do this a day ago, I don't know. And he goes, Lutz, can you talk to the tech guy and find out if they'll let us run without windows? Guy goes, yeah. Seven o'clock, we have to leave in an hour, right? Is that no, what no, I said? No. Five hours from now, the drag strip next door closes. So that's so our new we, bogey? New goal, if we get it running in four hours, we can go make a lap over there. Does it have to have brakes? No. Nah. We could not find junkyard tail lights, and so I'm using magnetic trailer lights, which won't magnetize. It's 9.30, we've got about two and a half hours until the drag strip closes. We're gonna fire off the motor for the very first time on the stock gas tank. And uh, the potential for that thing to turn brown right now and look like the bottom of a fish tank, very high. So go ahead, hit it. Hey, we got gas. Yeah! yeah. Alternator works. Cool. Right on. I was about ready to pack the wheel bearings and I noticed that we got the race spun in the drum, which is really ungood. Not sure how we're gonna fix that just yet. Probably knock it out and stake the back of it or something. Right? Huh? There's an old farmer's trick that you can do where you take a punch and you smack the machine surface where the race goes in and it makes little dents and little lifted areas of metal around the dent that reduce the inside diameter of the race journal so that the race can pound in again. And so this guy James who works at the auto ranch who has been super helpful and who is the master of the junkyard repair shows up, he knows this trick like that and dials us in. So we gotta bleed the brakes, fix all the water leaks, wire the tail lights, cut something off the floor of the car so that bench seat that we robbed from another car will fit. Make sure the shifter works. Drop it on the ground, try and run it. We're leaving tomorrow night sometime. <laughs> 24 hours from now, if at all. Time for bed. Let's go. Okay. Is it really? Did it sound like we were going to bed together? <laughs> Ah, that makes me feel better. Nitrous. Ventilated. Sealed.
At this point, there's the possibility that after all this work, we're gonna try and drive it around the block and the transmission will just be garbage. It spun the wheels on the jack stand, that doesn't mean it moves the car. Dude, don't talk about it. <laughs> That's don't just the possibility. We have a chrome air cleaner, okay? Oh uh, yeah, we'll be good. The car's fine. We got the car completely running, everything was coming together, and the brakes didn't work. It turns out that all of the little tiny line was just packed with goo. I ended up taking the entire brake system apart. The metering valve, the prop valve, Chingus, cramming wire through it, air, carb cleaner, nightmare. Even though we're not gonna get any test runs in Houston, we're still gonna be able to run across the street over here at North Star if only I can make this junk stop. I think all that's left to do is bleed the front brakes and uh, see if she'll drive down the street. Maybe even do a burnout. You know, there's a moment at which you think no amount of duct tape is actually going to get you on the road with this car. And then there's that moment where you fire it up and put it into gear and head out for your first test drive. And at this point, Finnegan and I are just giddy. And we pull out in front of the yard drive around a couple of times, and I swear we're not in the car 30 seconds before Finnegan's on the wood, and this thing lays patch for a half a block. Yeah! 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 <laughs> dude! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh, dude, it's spunky. And it smells like rubber in here. You know, three trips around the block is good enough proof for a junkyard car, so... What do you do? You head straight to the drag strip. <laughs> North Star is a really cool little track. It's an eighth mile, which is unusual for me, but nice place. The people there are fantastic. Can't say enough about the whole crew and how they treated us there. Finnegan goes up there to make the first pass on motor. <laughs> and I instantly whip out my phone and do the math to convert it to like a quarter mile time, which is language I understand, and it's a 1420. And I, I am just completely over the moon at this point because 1420 means that I can spray this thing into a 12 second car, for sure. It's 1130 and I don't think we're racing in Houston unless we get there at like nine or 10, which means we got a cannonball. Let's get the hell out of here. dry rotted tires or self ejecting the treads now. We heard something smack the inside of the quarter panel pretty hard and it was that. Not good. I vote limp it to the hotel, deal with it in the morning. Well yeah, we pretty much don't have a choice. We woke up in the morning at the Hooker Hotel and sure enough the tire was completely flat but that doesn't slow us down. We don't have a spare and we don't want to wait for a tow truck. So we hit the road in the Cuda with a dead flat tire. Drove the thing five miles on a completely flat tire, but the gearhead angels shine upon us once again because we never gacked the wheel. And we were able to slap new rubber on the car. We got four new tires, because that's the way we roll. Tires are on, feeling good, except we're suffocating from all the exhaust leaks in this thing and the holes in the floor. So we brought it to this muffler shop who said, two hours to change the header gaskets and the collector gaskets. We came back four hours later and it leaked worse than when we got here. So now Dave and I are fixing it ourselves, which is probably what we should have done first. Probably. <laughs> the end. The end. Dave and I proceed to take the next two hours, making it worse than it was when we rolled in, but better than it was when the professional mechanics had their hands on it. It still sounded like dog shit when we left. <laughs> We hit the road and the exhaust fume deal is just as bad as it ever has been. We got a pretty bad exhaust leak in the cooter. <laughs> and uh, we're basically suffocating while we drive. So I'm gonna hack up this two liter bottle of soda, 
duct tape it to the window frame and hopefully get some fresh air blowing at our dome so we don't pass out in the middle of the night while we're driving. Wide open windows and still you need a Coke bottle funneling the 70 mile an hour air directly at your face so that you can barely breathe enough to stay alive. We're in Houston. We spent most of yesterday getting tires on the car and trying to protect ourselves from carbon monoxide but we made it late last night and now we are headed to the racetrack, hopefully to make some nitrous passes in the car. And then I think we're gonna auction this thing off to some lucky person or unlucky person, depending on your point of view. What's going on here is a regular NMCA event, street car racing, pro street, the 10-5 cars, all the greatest heroes in the country, including the guys from Hot Rod Magazine Drag Week, like Jeff Lutz and Larry Larson and Tim Reed, and they were just busting a gut at the CUDA. We installed that NOS system in record time, I think 10 minutes, like literally three people, 10 hands, everything like this. We can't go home without running the nitrous to the thing, so. We don't have an electric fuel pump for the nitrous system, so we're gonna tee it into the stock pump, cross our fingers, and pray to God it doesn't lean out. Tim Reed, one of the guys that competes at Drag Week, was cool enough to loan me some of his nitrous system parts, and he come over and helped me wire the car. So when it was done, it only made sense to go for a test ride with him, because if it didn't work, it was kind of his fault. <laughs> Turned around to go back to the track because we need to do a little more tweaking on the car. And as I was making the U-turn, I hit the nitrous button on accident. Whoa, 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 whoa. Would you bump the button? No, my hand's up here. <laughs> my hand's up here, man. I bet you bunched the bump the... Oh, that's not good. Uh-oh. Right now, the bottle's leaking. I blame David for that because he tightened it. And we have no key to get the trunk open. So, uh... We're just gonna wait a little bit because the car is full of nitrous right now and not safe to drive down the road. It's a good thing we had a bunch of extra nitrous bottles with us because we had had them filled at North Star the night before. We were pitted right next to Jeff Lutz and he drives a 57 Chevy that's one of the fastest street cars on the planet. So when I asked him to help me stage the Cooter, he laughed at me, but he said yes. And so I've got this guy standing in front of the car and he's waving me into the beams and he's laughing his ass off because he's staging like a 15 second car. Lutz is jumping up and down because this thing ran 1474, but at 110 miles an hour. And I'm doing the math quick in my head going, that's a low 12 second car. It could be an 1190 car if it had traction. I went directly from the end of the drag strip back over to the grandstands right by the starting line. And uh, the announcer was super cool. He told everybody that we were jumping on an airplane right now and to get out whatever cash they had in their pockets because we were gonna auction the car off right then and there along with all of the tools we'd bought and whatever spare parts we didn't have time to install on it. And people showed up for this. I couldn't believe it. We got 100 bucks, what do we got over here? $200, $200. Anyone else? $300 from the gentleman in the red cap. Anyone else? 1000 bucks for Charlie. Whoa! $1,000. $1,200. $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1,500. $1,500. Anyone else? $1,500. Going once. He's checking it out. $2,025. Nice round number. I like that. How'd you pick that one? $24. Big move. Big move. $2,500. Window from Sam goes $2,500. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25. $25.
31. <laughs> okay, 3150. 3150. Going once. Going twice. Sold for 3150. All right. You know what the best part of this roadkill was? Think what didn't happen. What didn't happen? We didn't overheat and take the hood off the car. There were no gauges. We didn't even know if we were Oh, yeah, overheat. that's right. We, no, no oil pressure, no ammeter, no gauges. That's okay. The Junkyard hood, the hood car. did stay on the car, though, which is, that's a, that's a step up for us. Overall, I'm going to say really solid roadkill. Took a thing out of the junkyard, raised two drag strips, nitrous. My hands feel like I got into a fist fight with a cheese grater. And <laughs> I'm okay with it, man. It was pretty bad. Okay with it. One more bit of fun before we give it away. Ready? Yes, sir. Ready? For what? We're gonna go. <laughs> We're gonna do this now. Just pretend like I'm doing something here. Yeah, Basically yeah. what I'm doing. Okay. These are tight. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. Just tuck that in right there. Ready to go. Uh, let's go get a clap, David. Yay, us! Yay! <laughs> ah, roadkill. No logic. No budget. No shame. Give us a clap, David. That was a good oh, clap nice. with diesel hands. Nice. Diesel adds the power. Wow, you got some pop in that. It does. It's the diesel. I do I'm that. Convinced. Everything hurts. <laughs> Running out of daylight. I need parts. Hurry. <laughs> I've searched the whole place. There's no back tires or wheels we can use.